Happy Friday. <clears throat> happy Friday, happy Friday. Hey guys. All right, let's make sure everything's working. Seems to be hooked up right. So if you guys are watching the replay, thank you so much for being here. I'm so happy to see you. And we got some people coming in. So first of all, like always, let me know that you can hear me and see me and everything looks good technically. I am fighting against this um, the sunset and I think we have plenty of time with enough light during this video. <laughs> I was going to put my... Um, my big light on, but then I thought, well, we'll just risk it and try to use the natural light here. Tanya, hello, my dear. Good. She can hear me. So we should be good. Okay. So where are you guys watching from? Um, Tila, yeah, you just showed up at the very end on Facebook. So I'm glad you're here on YouTube. Um, I'm happy to see you, my friend. So it's 430 on Friday, which means probably most of you are in the Eastern time zone. And it's 7.30, so thank you for spending your Friday night with me. This is so good. Daughter is napping um, in there. I just fed the cats because they were, like, on the last video, they were just, like, standing right here wanting dinner. And they were bugging the crap out of me. Hey, Barbara. Annalisa from Colorado Spring, Colorado. Awesome. Kathy Shoulders from Indiana. Hello. Hey, guys. Some familiar names. I'm so happy to see you guys. Thanks for coming Um on today. Today we're talking about uh, the key to stick to healthy eating and consistency. Um, yeah, Linda says naps are good. Tell me about it, <laughs> especially for a toddler. Oh my gosh. It's so funny because um, I have been like letting her take, she's obsessed with cars, like vehicles. She has these, um, what do you call them, matchbox cars. And I was letting her take them into nap time with her. And then it started to become a problem because she would like play for like an hour, hour and a half. So today we stopped with the matchbox, matchbox cars and she went to sleep in like 15 minutes. It was so good. Um, Amor from Virginia. Hello. Cindy from Plover, Wisconsin. Hello. Hello. Hey guys. So happy to see you. I'm so glad you're here. Today we're going to be talking about consistency, sticking to healthy eating. You know, the thing is, everybody knows what they're supposed to eat, right? Like everyone knows they should have more vegetables. But how do you choose vegetables in the face of all the other things in the world <laughs> that we could be eating, right? In the face of pressure from family, in the face of um, pressure at work, billboards, driving past Starbucks, being conditioned to eat certain things over our lifetime. How do we finally choose healthy stuff consistently for the rest of our lives so that we can reach our goals, right? Like um, getting rid of diabetes, getting rid of heart disease, having tons of energy, feeling good in our bodies, losing weight to the place where we actually feel like we're at the place we need to be. Um, all the promises of Eat to Live, the Eat to Live lifestyle that Dr. Furman talks about in his books with the disease prevention and reversal, we can have all those things. But in order to get those things, we have to eat the food, <laughs> right? So how do we eat the food consistently? We got, um, I'm not sure what your name is, but I'm going to say Micah from, oh, Lynn, sorry, from Quebec. <laughs> Hello. Deborah from Oklahoma City. Sarah from Pennsylvania. Hey, guys. We got a nice little group here. This is great today. Thanks for showing up. So <clears throat> this video that I'm doing today, <coughs> excuse me, I'm like getting over this cold. I'm, I'm tail end, almost done. I can sleep well. I can actually sleep through the night now using my own nose, which is very helpful. And um, I can actually breathe, which is so, so fun. And now I am getting back into the big project that I was working on before I got sick, which is to create this brand new eight-week massive course that's all about this. It's going to teach you everything you need to know about how to be consistent, how to do this for the rest of your life, and how to choose eat to live foods even when you are going to parties or going out to restaurants or when you live people that don't eat like you. How do we do this? I'm going to teach you that. And in order to do that, 
I um, I first am going to give you guys a free four video mini course, just like four videos, but tons of free information all about this concept and like how do we do it. So today I'm going to tell you what the main key is. We're going to talk a little bit about that. The four video mini course for free is going to give you a lot more information. So if you just want to get that for free, there's so much good stuff in there. I totally recommend that you sign up for that. I put the information for it in the description. Let me also put it in a comment here so you guys can see it. And um, if you sign up there, I'm going to send out this mini course starting on Monday. That's just in like two days from now. So make sure you sign up so you can get that mini course. I'll send that out to you. It will tell you more about the upcoming big kahuna eight-week course, which is going to be called the eight-week Eat to Live Academy. So you definitely want to join the academy if you can. But I mean, if anything, just get this free mini course, okay? You do that by signing up um, at the link I gave you, or here it is right here too, which is um, info.thewateringmouth.com slash opt-in, okay? So just go there, sign up real quick, get that over with, and you'll get that free course starting on Monday. There's going to be some amazing info in there. Um, I ran this course in a shorter, like abbreviated version back in August of last year, and it went over like gangbusters. Everyone in there loved it. They felt like they got a lot out of it, and it kind of changed the way they saw everything. <laughs> so please consider this seriously, okay? Um, so let's talk today a little bit about, um, we've got some more people in here. Sarah from Pennsylvania, I think I might have said. Uh, Linda from Utah, Jody. Hey guys. And then um, Crowley Crazy 8 from Northern Nevada. Oh, Nevada. Nice. Can't wait for the mini course. Good. I'm glad. I hope you love it. So let's talk today about kind of the topic, which is the key to stick to healthy eating and stay consistent. So there's one key. We'll get to that in a second. I want to talk about how I came across this. So I don't know if you know me, but I've been doing this for a while. I have had this website and this YouTube channel for eight years almost. Um, in February is my eight-year anniversary. And I found Eat to Live seven years ago. Um, and when I found Eat to Live, I read the book and I was like hooked. Me and my friend Tanya were just talking yesterday about being nutrition nerds. And she's actually on here right now, mountain hiker. Total nutrition nerds. And I remember just, I mean, I love this kind of stuff. I read the book and one weekend I curled up in my um, like jacuzzi tub, but it wasn't working. <laughs> it was like a non-functional jacuzzi tub. So I took a big, huge comforter and I put that in the tub and I just read that book all in one weekend in like two and a half days, just devoured it and loved it. And this was in um, March of 2013. <clears throat> and then it wasn't until June of 2013 that I actually started it. <laughs> and I wanted to point this out because even me, a super nutrition nerd who loved this, and the minute I read it, I was like, oh, this is it. This is what I have to do. This is the way I'm going to eat for the rest of my life. I, I know that this is it. It still intimidated me so much that I didn't actually start doing it for three months. And it wasn't even because I chose to do it. It's because I went and stayed with a friend who already did this lifestyle. She's the one that told me about it, Catherine. I stayed with her that weekend. She made a couple dishes for me. She made Dr. Furman's chocolate smoothie and then a salad. And I was like, wait a minute, this food is really good. And, and I was already sold on the concepts, but I was just terrified that the food was going to be terrible. And when she made that food for me, I was like, wait a minute. I could do this for the rest of my life. So that was when I started was June 28th, 2013. And I say this because <laughs> like even loving this stuff, even this being my whole life, this is my business, this is my passion, this is my mission in life as a person, like as a human, this is what I want to, I want to have a legacy of this. Um, it still was <laughs> like impossible for me to get started too. And then, um, you know, I did really well in the first few months, but then, and I lost like 22 pounds in six weeks in the first six weeks. And then I was able to like keep going for a few months, but then my dad passed away like right then. So grieving process had me, you know, like this in the first six, 12 months of this whole thing. 
And then for me, what it was going to be was trying to figure out how to stay consistent. That was like my main goal. I already knew Eat to Live was it. I already knew that this was what I was going to do. But it was how to stay consistent was my quest then. So let me just take a little break here for a second and say that um, we're talking about the keys to consistency, the keys to sticking to healthy eating forever in preparation for an upcoming mini course that I'm putting out that starts on Monday and it's free and anyone can get it. Just have to sign up the link. We're talking about this because I'm releasing a huge course that's going to give you all the information you need to stay consistent for forever. But also, like, so that's what this live video is about. But also, this can be just like a regular Q&A. So whoever's on here, if you have any just regular general eat to live questions, I would love to answer those too. Or just any questions about anything when it comes to this lifestyle or something close to it, I'm happy to answer those questions too. So, um, <coughs> excuse me. Teresa, yes, I am vegan uh, <laughs> for, for the most part. When I'm um, when I'm when I was pregnant, it, it it's a little different story. But um, but yes, I enjoy being vegan. I enjoy eating eat to live foods and living this lifestyle um, for the animals, but for the nutritional aspect first and foremost, uh, and the environment, of course, as well. And then, hello, my dear, waving. Um, I, I don't know exactly what your name is, but it says Kay Kala, just home from playing with grandkids. Oh, what a lovely day. I'm so glad you're here. Thanks for coming on. Um, oh my gosh, Kim from Japan. Wow. What day is it? <laughs> what time is it? So cool. Caroline from Ottawa, Ontario. I'm so glad you guys are here. I'm so happy to spend this live time with you. So you know, so I had an interesting kind of foray into this and it became my quest over the next few years to figure out how to stay consistent, like how to just keep doing it. Because at the time I was married to my ex-husband who was not interested in healthy eating. I swear his dinners used to be popcorn, microwave popcorn and um, ice cream, was it? Yeah. What did he used to eat? Ice cream and popcorn. That was dinner. <laughs> but he had a really physical job. So the calorie thing didn't matter to him. He always stayed his weight. And so he didn't really have much interest in healthy eating. So the first, you know, beginning of this is what I was dealing with there. And then um, so many other struggles over time. Like my biggest struggle was always like 3 p.m., 2, 3, 4 p.m. in the afternoon. You've had your nice big lunch. You don't even really need to eat anymore. You can tell that you're full and you don't need any more food. And then the cravings kick in, right? Something specific, like for me, um, for a long time there, after I was pretty healthy, it was banana ice cream. And you guys can actually see that in my 21-day um, or my 10 and 20 videos that I did based on Dr. Furman's program. Um, <laughs> like, you just get these cravings and you can't – so it didn't even have to be banana ice cream. Just whatever it was, 3 p.m., there was always a massive craving for something. The cats are going crazy right now because they just had dinner and now they have all this energy. So they're going to fight <laughs> do their thing. So don't mind them if you hear some crazy noises in the background. Um, so I, I kind of had my um, – things to get over and the things that I wanted to solve, right? For me, it was this like afternoon snack time thing. I know a lot of my clients in the past, it's evening snacking after dinner or whatever. And so I thought, well, I want to figure this out for myself. And I also wanted to coach. So I started coaching this lifestyle too and private coaching. And so I have a really nice like um, understanding of what so many of your struggles are as well. And I was talking about on the Facebook group, how I found this biggest struggle was I was taking all of the answers that everyone gave me about this one question I asked about what do you struggle with the most? So many of my audience members from my Facebook group answered that question. So I took all of their answers and put them into this word map software online. And it told me what the most common words were in your struggles. Number one struggle, of course, is weight loss. Um, we want to lose weight. We want to look and feel our best. But the number two struggle was consistency. Can you hear that? Meow. Guys, for reals, I'm doing a live video. Come on. <laughs> You're like, we do not care. We are cats. Um, consistency and sticking to it. Those were the top, after weight loss, those were the top two things. 
um, time was an issue, prepping, things like that, but it was mostly consistency and sticking to it. Do you guys feel that too? Like, is that a struggle of yours as well? Um, consistency, sticking to it. Like you, is, is this kind of familiar to you? Like, you know, you're supposed to eat this way and you know, you really want to eat this way, but like just actually doing it is a different animal. So let's see. Let me move this out of the way. Yeah. Teresa says, I wish I could be consistent. I know. I know the feeling. Um, so I'll get to these, <coughs> excuse me, other questions in a moment. So do you guys relate with this kind of consistency thing? So that was my quest. That's what I wanted to figure out for myself. And then with all my private co coaching of dozens and dozens of clients and then <clears throat> putting on my 21 day challenges and watching everyone's struggles in there, the biggest question that came up that comes up when I do a 21 day challenge, which by the way, many of you are doing the 21 day challenge that's almost over right now. Congrats and bravo. Um, the biggest question that always comes up in the 21 day challenge is what do I do when it's done? Like, how do I keep going? How do I keep doing this? Because my challenge is I think of everything for you, right? The grocery list, the prepping, all the meal planning, stuff like that. You don't have to think of anything for 21 days, but then how do you keep going afterwards? And so that became the big thing I wanted to answer. And when I, yeah, so Kathy says definitely consistency. Yeah. When I started um, searching for the answer to this, the answer actually just like came to me. It was, well, the answer was this life coaching stuff that I do, <laughs> right? So I got certified as a life coach from the life coach school in October of last year. And it was a wonderful program. And <clears throat> just looking at that information changed my life. And then becoming proficient at coaching it and learning how to be like an expert at coaching that part of it. Um, I have a Patreon channel. Patreon is a place where people sponsor me on a monthly basis. Any audience member can sponsor me a dollar a month, $5 a month or whatever. I have a patron on there who, when I was doing my certification, she says, oh my gosh, you're getting certified from the life coach school. She was like, I always thought if you put eat to live plus life coach school techniques together, you would have like the best program. And it is so true. She's exactly right. And that's that was exactly the same feeling I had when I found these life coaching techniques. Because it, what it comes down to is like, you can eat all the great food you want in the world, but some of us are still going to have massive issues with consistency, massive issues with cravings, emotional eating, sticking to it, right? Because like consistency and sticking to it are the goals, but why don't we? It's emotional eating, it's cravings, point blank. That's what it is always throws us off, right? Like we might go to a party, see some food that we want, can't stick to it, or husband makes fun of us, or mother-in-law makes fun of us, or mother makes fun of us, or whatever, whatever that is. And it really like makes us a little bit wobbly, right? So how do we get over that? That's what we're going to talk about today. <clears throat> so yeah, Gwen says that th this time of night is hard. Do you want banana ice cream? Yeah. And then um, Annalisa says, yeah, tortilla chips are my snacking nemesis. Like you said, when the cravings hit, it's hard to grab celery instead. Yeah, I was talking about that in the Facebook group. Like all of the current information that we hear about dieting and eating healthfully is like, <clears throat> okay, more vegetables. You should, you know, eat healthy, whatever. But like if you want to get over cravings, like when you have a craving for something um, salty or crunchy, just eat celery, right? Like as if that's actually going to get that craving to go away. You, you want something salty, like a tortilla chip or something, and then someone tells you to eat celery and you're like, really? Yeah, no. <laughs> it doesn't work because it's not actually getting to the issue. And so let's talk about what the issue is then. Let's get to it. I'll get to your questions in a second, but um, <clears throat> we talk about the key to stick to healthy eating and stay consistent. Like what is the key to our issue, like our struggle? Why do we emotionally eat? Why do we have so many cravings? That kind of a thing. So we go into this crazy in-depth in my upcoming academy, in the upcoming course. But the actual answer is our thoughts. It's actually our mindset. And when I say mindset, I mean our thoughts. It is the thoughts that roll around in our brain that either create and support or don't support healthy eating. So um, an example of this, for instance, 
you're sitting there at 3 p.m. or 4 p.m. and your thoughts start to go a little bit haywire about banana ice cream or they start to go a little bit haywire about pizza or whatever it is that your favorite snack food is at that time of the night. So you start you start to have these cravings and what cravings, all cravings are just thoughts that are going through your mind, just like repetitive, very strong thoughts, right? So you have these thoughts and it's what do you do with those? Because we, we all have cravings, yeah? Like we're all wired to crave. We're all wired to have these kinds of things. So what do we do with it? It's what we do with it after that changes things. It's not learn how to prep better. It's not remove all of the bad food from your house ever. Because I promise you, even once you get better at this and you cut the sugar, salt, and oil, you have no gluten in your house or whatever it is that you get rid of finally, you're going to find something to snack on. You will get creative. <laughs> Trust me. I I got so creative about the stuff I used to snack on and, and eat and just overeat on because it wasn't about the specific foods. It was about the mindset. It was about the thoughts that were going through my head that I was just trying to quiet down, right? Like you're having these cravings. You can't stop listening to them and suddenly you just give in because you're sick of listening to the craving. So how do you get over that? So the other like little nugget that I want to give you is the actual problem is not that like we don't have willpower or we're just terrible people or it's not possible for us or we've been dieting too long so now we're ruined because our metabolism is terrible and this and that and this and that. It has nothing to do with that. It actually has to do with the fact that we don't have great skills when it comes to managing our emotions, okay? That's the key. That's the whole answer. We're not good at managing our emotions. So the other thing we talk about in my coaching is that our thoughts create our results. So if our thoughts are all about, oh, I'm terrible at this, I'm craving so much, I can't stop, I have no willpower, what's wrong with me, there must be something wrong with me, I'll never get this right. If those are our thoughts, <laughs> right, like if that is the like witch's brew of stuff going around in our head all the time, you can bet we're going to continue to snack and you can bet we're going to continue to crave and emotionally eat and react poorly when things come our way, etc. But if we can instead change our thoughts and we can be aware of the thoughts that are coming to us, we can be okay with being uncomfortable, which is one of the biggest things we can do, learning to deal with discomfort and being okay with being uncomfortable if we can learn about this and learn how to do it and get really good at it, there's no craving that can ever derail us. This is everything we talk about in my upcoming academy. We talk about how to strengthen our emotional resolve, how to manage our emotions. Because you don't have a problem with sugar. You don't have a problem with cravings. You don't have a problem with flour or oil or french fries or you don't have issues with that you just have issues with managing your emotions that's it the best news about this is that we can learn to and so we can learn to get over these like food issues and these struggles that's the best news and the best news is that the only requirement the only requirement for being able to do this is that you have a functioning brain. So congratulations, my friend. You can do this too. Every single one of you watching this can do this too. All you need to learn, and, and the issue is that we're not taught about emotional management ever, anywhere, <laughs> right? They don't teach it to us when we're kids. They tell us just to be nice, right? They don't tell us what to do with those emotions when we feel negative. They teach us that we should... Um, you know, if we're a good girl, we'll get some candy, or if we're nice, we'll get this, right? We get this reward system that's based on food. We're taught that if we feel poorly at work, we have a bad day, wine and chocolate will make it better, right? Or that comfort food that we love will make it better. That's what we're taught. Like we are actually taught that. We see it in, you guys start watching this too, you'll see it everywhere. It's in all the movies, all the popular culture. Like, watch a chick flick <laughs> and tell me you don't see something like that 
where someone is going off and using wine or using alcohol or using um, some type of a comfort food to make themselves feel better. But what if we could just deal with those emotions and we didn't have to use food? And then this is the thing. If you use food to fix an emotional issue, you're also going to get all the guilt that comes on top of that and you're going to get weight gain and water retention. You're going to just pile up all these things on top of the problem that doesn't go away. Like the problem is still there under there like you're playing Twister or something and everyone's piled up on top of it, right? The problem itself doesn't go away. So think about any time that you've ever overeaten. <clears throat> what was the cause? It's either because you were really upset about something, you were really happy about something, and you're just conditioned to use food to make it bigger. You uh, were in front of something that you thought to yourself, I'm not going to be able to handle this, right? You went to a party and so-and-so was pushing food on you and you had thoughts that were like, I deserve it or it's been a long week or whatever, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? This is all emotional management. If we can learn to manage those emotions, this is when it starts happening. So that's what we talk about in my upcoming mini course, a lot more in depth. And then this is what I teach you to do. I'll show you guys a little sneak peek of the organization that's going on. This is just the first <laughs> set of lessons here. There's a bunch more back here. Um, the planning is occurring right now. This upcoming course is going to be so, so <clears throat> life-changing, you guys. It changed my life. It was the answer I was always looking for. I always did eat to live, and I was like, this is so great and all, but what do I do with the cravings? You know, I love the food. It's wonderful. I know it's great, but what do I do when I just can't stick to it? How do I stick to it, right? That was my quest. That's what I figured out. That's what got me to this place of peace in my life now. And that's what I teach to all my private clients a little bit to an extent in my 21 day challenges as much as I can. Um, in all my YouTube videos now, this is it. This is the answer. This is the, the thing you've been waiting for, <laughs> right? And I'm going to teach it to you. So if you're interested in this, um, at least, at least at the bare minimum, get the upcoming four video sorry, still a little bit sick, <laughs> upcoming four video mini course that's coming out. It starts on Monday, so you don't want to miss this. At least get that. Info.thewateringmouth.com slash opt-in. Sign up there. I put a link also in the comments here, so make sure that you, and there's one in the description too, so sign up wherever you can sign up. Get this four video mini course. At least get that. It's free jam-packed with information. You're going to learn so much just in that course. And then that course is going to tell you all about the upcoming academy. This is an eight-week academy that's going to give you all the things you need to know about this. By the end of it, you are going to be an expert. You're going to know exactly what to do and exactly how to do it to get yourself to this place of peace that I'm talking about. The one that I'm always talking about in my videos, which is where I am now. The, the thing I was always searching for how do you get to be peaceful about your food? How do you get to just choose eat to live, right? How do you just, how is it just easy to go to any party or wedding or, you know, get through any holiday without any drama? How is that possible? That's what I'm going to teach you. Um, <clears throat> Carol says, do the four videos come out all at once? No, they drip. So it's going to be Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. So they start Monday, then you'll get you get the first video Monday, second video Tuesday, third video Wednesday, and then on Thursday, it's only the fourth video and all the rest of the videos disappear, okay? So you've got to get in on this now. Uh, at least by Wednesday, you want to get in on it so you can binge watch them all before Thursday rolls around because Thursday they disappear, and then that's when the course opens up, okay? Okay, so let's – um, <clears throat> let me – so that's kind of like what I want to talk about today. Let me get back through the questions here. If you guys have any more um, Q&A stuff, feel free to ask me, and I'll go through that too. <coughs> Excuse me. 9.20 a.m. on Saturday, Kim, in Japan. Dang, that's awesome. But, you know, at least it's not like middle of the night. Okay, Annalisa says, do you find it easy to get your G-bombs in? And do you have a recipe with all of them in one dish? Yeah, there's lots of recipes like that. Many of the salads that we 
create for our 21 day challenges. And a lot of my recipes in the what I eat in a day videos on YouTube have all the G bombs in them, especially the salads with fruit in them. Um, otherwise it's super easy to get a salad that has everything and just have some berries on the side if it doesn't kind of go with that salad. Okay. So that's really easy. Um, <clears throat> but really when it comes down to it, it's very simple. You just got to practice it for a few months and then you'll be an expert at it. So, um, eating this way helped so much, not only for health, but for inflammation. What a difference. Yeah, totally. hundred percent. It's like, we know it's great for us, right? And we know we feel so good when we do it, but how do we just do it consistently? Gwen says, hello from Panama. Awesome. Um, Caroline says, do you have a certain time that you stop eating, even an occasional evening snack? Yeah, I. Um, <clears throat> this is the thing, Caroline. When you get to this place of peace, my son's <laughs> leaving, as you guys can tell, but um, I think I still have enough for the rest of this video. When you get to this place that I'm talking about, consistency, the most beautiful thing about it is that there's no more drama around food. Like you don't even like think about it. You're just like, I'm just going to eat what I'm supposed to eat and that's it. So another thing that we learn to do is that we have big enough meals that after the meal's done, we don't want any more food. That's Mecca, <laughs> right? Like that's the Holy Grail. That's where we want to get. So you ask even an occasional evening snack as if you're asking for permission to do that, right? If you're at your healthy weight and you no longer have any issues with food, you won't need a healthy, you won't, eat, you won't need an evening snack, right? Or an evening snack won't matter whether or not you have it. Do you kind of get what I mean there? Like it won't matter. You won't even care about having an evening snack because you will have had plenty of dinner and then you'll just be like, I'm done. That's fine. And there'll be no drama, right? That's where we're trying to go. That's where we want to get. That's our, that's what I want to teach you. <laughs> how to do. That's what I want to teach you to get. Okay. Uh, adrenaline fatigue, Sheila, <clears throat> you know, hormonal issues are taken care of on this lifestyle. Once you've done it for long enough, the hormones take care of themselves and get much better. Teresa says, I wish I could be consistent. I know girl, <laughs> I know the feeling. That's why I'm here. That's why I do what I do. So stick with me. Um, <clears throat> Gwen wants to do the 21 day challenge. Awesome. We'll be doing another one in March or April. So sign up at thewateringmouth.com slash challenge. We'll notify you when the next one comes up. Um, okay. Teresa says, are you no oil, no sugar, no salt? Yeah. I've been trying to do that for a month. The only thing I have a hard time with is salt, a little bit of agave. Yeah. This is just, um, this is just part of it. This is just part of your journey. You will get there. It took me years to give up salt, probably like two, three years when I first started because I just emotionally was very attached to it and I was very stubborn about giving up. I'm a stubborn person. <laughs> so giving up a lot of these things was just more of an exercise in like me getting over stubbornness, right? Um, but yes, you will get over it. You will get to, and this is the part that no one believes. Everyone I think thinks we're in some kind of a conspiracy or whatever, like, but you will get to a place where you actually love eat to live foods without salt, without soil, <laughs> oil or soil and without sugar. You actually will get there because your taste buds will adjust. Your um, sort of emotional aspect of it will adjust and you'll be totally fine with, excuse me, having none of that extra stuff and it won't matter to you anymore. Um, but we really do love these foods when we get used to it. But I suggest uh, trying little things at a time. Like one day, just give up extra sugar, right? The next time, maybe when you're ready, give up salt, figure that out. I have lots of videos about sodium and things like that and how to flavor things without sodium, etc. Excuse me. I'm sorry for the sniffing, but... <laughs> Kim says, no, not my emotions. LOL. Yeah, totally. It is the emotions. I promise you. And then she says, you are wise beyond your years, Sherry. Yeah. It's not, I mean, I didn't figure this stuff out. I was taught this <laughs> from my life coaching school, right? And it is true. When you put eat to live with this mindset technique stuff, to me, it is the most powerful health program in the world and it is going to take over I promise. Just watch me. Caroline says, sadly, I see it with toddlers. Food is the answer. Absolutely. They're, that's what they're taught. Exactly. And that's where this starts. Um, Sheila says, we eat three times, no snack. And when we want to lose weight or eat to live, <clears throat> says about this. I'm so confused. Yeah. So 
you have a choice, Chila, of doing either three times a day, no snacking or two times a day, no snacking. So it kind of depends on if you're doing intermittent fasting or not. Intermittent fasting, of course, is the two times a day, no snacking or whatever, or just getting your food in within an eight hour window during the day. You can choose how you want to do that. So it's either three times a day, no snacking or two times a day, no snacking, no snacking ever, no matter what, whether you're trying to lose weight or not. Um, and the sort of uh, setup that we have in the challenges, which of course you know about because you've taken the challenges, um, that's what we're trying to get to where we kind of just eat those types of meals consistently all the time. And if you find you're having trouble losing weight, then you personally are going to want to cut back on some nuts and seeds or grains or whatever and add more veggies in somehow or just fruit or whatever it is, whatever sort of you need to. I'm sitting on my mic. <laughs> um, yeah, so you kind of have to find the thing that works for you. <clears throat> um, and then find what works for you too as far as like when you eat and how much you eat during the day too. Like I, I'm really comfortable with three times a day and then sometimes I do two times a day. It just depends on the day really. So there's no set rules. You get to figure this out for yourself. So Caroline says, meaning if you're good, you get a treat. If you're bored, you yeah, exactly. With the kids for sure. Jeanette says, hello from Australia. <coughs> New to the nutritarian lifestyle. Uh, you are making it so much easier with your videos. Yay! That's what the, my whole goal, Jeanette. I'm so glad. Linda says, is it one every day for four days? Yeah, so the videos is one every day for four days. As I said, um, if you guys are interested in this free four video mini course I'm putting on, you want to sign up at um, info.thewateringmouth.com slash opt-in. There's a link in the comment section. There's a link in the description. I'll also put up this link too so you guys can see it. Sign up for this so you can get the free four video mini course that I'm putting out for you. Tons of free information in here. So if you only sign up here, you're going to get awesome, awesome information. But you also want to be looking for, with information is in here, the upcoming academy that I'm putting together for you guys. Eight week Eat to Live Academy. It's going to talk all about the food part, but mainly the mindset part. We're going to have a lot to talk about the food, but it's going to give you everything I have on the mindset. Um, I showed you guys a little sneak peek of the course preparations going on right now. Um, it's going to be life-changing, phenomenal. I guarantee you it will change your life. This is stuff that nobody talks about. This is going to be brand new. I mean, if you've been interested in the stuff I've been talking about for the last year on my YouTube channel, you are going to love this course. All right. So uh, Lee says socializing is so hard. I know everyone wants to go out to eat. Exactly. But what if you were in a place where you were so solid and so calm and peaceful about this that going out to eat was no longer hard for you? Could you imagine um, a time in your life or what it would be like if all your girlfriends were like, hey, we're going out to eat or whoever you usually go out to eat with or say your family or whatever. They're like, hey, we're going out to eat. And you're like, yeah, let's do it. You had absolutely no thoughts about the food part because you're so good at it already and because your mindset is so clean about it because you don't have any issues with food anymore. You're like, yeah, I'll I'm totally down. I don't care where we go. You guys pick the place. That's what I'm going to teach you. How do you get there, right? There's a lot of strategies you can use for this. But I'm not talking about strategy. We can talk about strategies. That's fine. But what I'm talking about is the mindset part where you're not freaking out about it. You're not like worried that you're going to go off plan or this or that. It just, you're just like, yeah, where are we going? You know, you guys pick. That's what I'm going to teach you to do. So um, Smilene says, I don't know if you've been reading these, but I have often thought you'd be excellent for TV commercials. Thanks. <laughs> um Okay, Kim says, I just activated Siri for you, showed you info on weight. Oh, good. <laughs> what else do you need me to do with your Siri? And then um, Caroline says, I already love this way of eating. I'm trying to get rid of the stubborn 10 to 15 pounds. Yeah, so um, <laughs> let me just say something. This is going to maybe come out a little bit wrong, Caroline, but it's not the pounds that are stubborn. It's you, <laughs> right? Like it is those emotional things. It is the thoughts that are in your head that are stubborn. They are just so repetitive for you and they just are keeping you in the same exact place for a period of time. You have the ability to get over this and to easily drop any of the pounds you want to drop ever. It's all in your head. It's all in your thoughts. So let me show you how to do that. 
And then Melody says, eating enough is key. Salad can be filling and needs goodies like beans and seeds. I like to eat out and fortunately have a great salad bar at our local food co-op. Absolutely. <clears throat> that is one of the main food keys about this, um, which we talk about in our 21 day challenges that so important to make sure that we're getting enough food so that we feel satiated and we don't feel starved. Of course, we need to be getting enough food, and enough nutrients. Once we get that worked out, which is what I call a protocol, which we're going to be talking about a lot more in the uh, in the upcoming academy, and I will explain to you how to create your own protocol and st stick to it, like a protocol that works for you specifically. We're going to be working on that in the course. Um, once Once we get that part figured out, the rest is just mindset, 100%. Uh-oh, my daughter might be awake. <laughs> but anyways, that's – sorry for sniffing. That's all the questions I have. Teresa says she wants to try the 21-day challenge. I want you to try it too. I know you'll love it. So that's all the questions. I, I got through all the questions, I think. Let me just double check. Yeah. Um, just remember we're doing this for this free four video mini course. That's all about this. It's going to go way more in depth. I got lots more great information in there for you. So if anything, just sign up for that course. Okay. Um, you do that here at info.thewateringmouth.com slash opt in. Do that now. The course is starting on Monday. That's just a couple days away. So make sure you sign up for it. And then you will have an opportunity and a lot more information about here. Let me turn up my computer. Ah, and then that makes it brighter. Okay, perfect. <laughs> Guess we are like almost out of light out here. But that course is going to tell you more about the upcoming academy that you guys can join, which is going to be life-changing, wonderful information about how to do this for life, how to stay consistent, and how to stick to the healthy eating that you know you want to do, right? Um, I'm going to teach you exactly how to do that. It all comes down to your thoughts, and I'm going to explain just how in the upcoming mini course and the academy. So please stick with me. I hope you guys are able to join. I would love to see you in there. If you have any other questions, email me. Or um, there's going to be, I think, even a section in the mini course where you'll be able to ask, do comments and ask questions and stuff in there too, right on the page where the videos are. So make sure you sign up for that and then you can ask questions there. Um, Sheila says, we need to find a sponsor and build some retreat center for us, for sure. No, I, this is, uh, Sheila, like... I'm I'm, a, I'm um, fortune telling right now, but my business is going to have a retreat portion to it very soon, probably next year or something like that. We're going to do retreats all over the place. So uh, just stay tuned. Mark my words. Um, Sandra says, what's a good tip for getting back on track after weight loss and then having a binge? It's your emotions. <laughs> it's your thoughts. <laughs> it's all about your thoughts, Sandra. So um we need to get you to a place where your thoughts are cleaned up and where this is no longer an issue for you and binging will never occur again. Um, I promise you that's what this, that's what happens here. We just need to clean up the mind. We have to clean up the way that you deal with your emotions. We have to clean up the way that you deal with your thoughts, uh, the way you deal with your feelings. Once we get this stuff figured out and cleaned up, the eating part becomes non-existent. And then we get to be the people we were always meant to be that don't have food issues. This is available to all of us. I guarantee you it is. We just have to put the work in and sort of reprogram ourselves from what we've been programmed to do our whole life. But we have this ability. Um, <clears throat> Margaret, I'm glad to hear you say everything that makes so much sense. I'm so glad to hear that. Um, and then Amanda, coconut sugar, avoid it. Yeah, any kind of sugar we avoid, uh, agave nectar, nectar, coconut sugar, et cetera. If it's a whole food, you don't have to avoid it. But also you want to make sure that you're not having too much of it, if, even if it's a plant food, um, whole plant food, like dates, for instance. I used to have a major issue with dates. I'd eat way too many dates. Um, and that's something I had to figure out too. So it's it, like I always say, if you think you might be having a problem with something, you have a problem with it. <laughs> <laughs> right? And you got to figure that out. If you feel no drama around any foods whatsoever, you're where you need to be. And then weight loss is easy. Socialization is easy. You know, social events, being at work, whatever, all those things are easy. That's where we want to go. That's our goal. Uh, and that's where I'm going to take you. Okay. So that's what I got for you guys. Yeah. Maple syrup, same thing. Um, any kind of sugar without fiber and e just eating too many dates, all the same thing. So avoid that. Um, that's all I have for you guys. So 
let me take you to this amazing place of finally having peace around your food. It's such a lovely, wonderful place that then you get to just concentrate on the things that make you, you. And having more of like you in the world is what we all need. We need you to be passionate and loving and interested in all of the things that you are going to be interested in that don't have anything to do with food. Because food is just fuel, right? Food is just the thing that gets us through the day. And who do we get to be without food issues, without any struggles about weight or anything like that? Who would we be? What would we do with that extra time? (laughs) And telling you what you would do with that extra time is really important. And we need to see what that's going to be like. So um, stick with me. Thank you so much for spending this time with me, you guys. Your Friday night is precious and I am so glad you spent it with me. So I hope to see you guys in this upcoming course, op, uh, info.thewateringmouth.com slash opt-in. I want to see you in this free four-video mini course, and then I want to see you in the academy as well. So keep an eye out for information about that. I'll see you guys in the next video next week, which I think is going to be a what I eat in a day. Yay! And um, until then, have an awesome weekend and talk to you soon. Bye! <laughs>